Oh shit, it's the cops. Good day, officer. Paramotors, obviously I love them unconditionally. For the last nine years of my life, my life has basically revolved around paramotors. Flying them, selling them, making videos. I basically made a career around paramotoring, which is amazing. But today I wanted to share five things that I don't like about paramotors because nothing in life is perfect and paramotors are no exception. Now, if you're wondering where we are at, we are at a different site today, somewhere I've never flown from. Behind me, is the middle school that I attended. I probably got bullied at some point right here at the main entrance. Around here in the back was the woodworking class. You had to walk outside to get to the woodworking class. This soccer field was where very unathletic me failed at soccer and gym class in general. I've talked about this in some previous videos, but the main park that we always fly at got shut down and it's really unfortunate because the valley that the park resides in is like the best place to fly paramotors. And I've never flown from this school ever before, mainly because as you can see behind me, it's really small and tight. I've laid out my wing on the basketball court. I've got to avoid this light pole. I've got to weave through some stuff and make a climb out uphill and not hit the trees. So launch is gonna be tight, but I know I can pull it off. Let's switch to GoPro cam and get in the sky. Most definitely a tight one. Let's see if we can pull this off. All right, let's get to it. Here are my five things I hate about paramotoring and my disclaimer is that I hate even saying I hate anything about paramotoring because it's such an awesome, life-changing, incredible thing. But like I said, nothing in this world is perfect. And these are in no specific order. So starting from the beginning, uh, one thing I hate about paramotoring is the regulations and certain regulations specifically. Because the regulations for paramotoring, aka FAR 103, you can look it up, it's about the front uh, sheet of a paper. It's super short, which is really amazing that the regulations in general for paramotoring are so brief and we have a lot of freedom. But there are specific regulations that I do hate. One of which is that we can't fly at night. We can fly 30 minutes after sunset and 30 minutes before sunrise if we have a strobe on board. And I always like find myself sitting outside on a beautiful full moon night when the stars are bright, wishing that I could go for a flight on my paramotor. I'm not going to admit that I've ever done that in the past. However, if I had, I would guarantee you that it would be amazing. Another regulation that I don't like is that paramotors are limited to carrying five gallons of gas. And if you guys watch the Icarus race or any of my long cross country videos, you'll know that I put fuel bladders on and I get as close to the five gallon limit as I can. But for situations like that, I always wish that I could carry like just an excessive amount of fuel and fly for hours on end and not have to worry. So the last regulation I don't like, um, which I love it and I hate it. It's one of the biggest regulations that we have to abide by, uh, which says we cannot fly over people or open air assemblies of persons, however it's phrased in the actual FARs, which to a large degree is completely understandable. The goal of the regulation is to not endanger any people on the ground. So basically, if there's a neighborhood, we want to fly around it. However, there's so many situations where I'm like, it would be amazing if somehow we could fly over like downtown New York City or Miami or something like that where it's not in controlled airspace, but we could fly over large areas of people because that would be super awesome. Here's our daily phone dangle with two fingers. Does this freak everyone out? Comment down below. 
The next thing I hate about paramotor, and, and this is also a love-hate relationship, is the inherent risk. And I say it's love-hate because anything I think in life that you get more enjoyment out of or creates excitement uh, inherently comes with some risk. And paramotoring is no different. Overall, I would say the sport is super safe. It's as safe as you make it. Statistically, I feel like it's as safe as any other form of aviation. But there's obviously some inherent risk. And the longer I'm in the sport, and I guess probably the older I get, the more I guess I become more and more aware of that danger. I have more and more friends who've gotten injured in some way or another. Every year, there's a number of fatalities that you hear about, and that always sucks. And if you guys have been following along in some of the recent videos, on a somber note, I recently lost a really good friend of mine, Jeff, uh, in a paramotoring accident. And that's one of the things that sucks about paramotoring, is it is riskier than not paramotoring. It's riskier than just sitting at home on the couch. But sitting at home on the couch is boring. Flying around with a fan attached to your back and a piece of fabric above your head, that's exciting. And I love it, but it does suck when people get injured doing this or um, unfortunately pass away doing this. About to go stealth mode on this deer. Well, he didn't care at all. On to number three, the third thing I hate or strongly dislike about paramotoring. And that is the public perception. I would say that 99% of people that see paramotors flying around this community um, really enjoy it. They think it's awesome. They like to take pictures. They find it entertaining. They think it's super cool and they want to ask questions. However, there is a 1% that hates it. That 1% unfortunately ends up being the loudest. And in a lot of cases, at least here in New Jersey, we've been kicked out of a lot of flying sites because of specific people that make complaints and go to town meetings and call the cops and stuff like that. That's super lame. But that 1% does exist and that 1% does have a large unfortunate influence. Ah, there's a bug in my pants! On to the fourth thing I hate about paramotoring, and that is the maintenance. Now, overall, paramotors don't require a lot of maintenance, but the thing that kind of sucks is somewhere around like the 200 hour mark is where a lot of engines call for like rebuild kits or some serious maintenance. See, this lovely lady is filming me on her iPhone while walking her poodle. She's not part of the 1% that hates us. The vast majority of paramotor engines are two-stroke, and they've honestly come a long way. When you think about it, the power-to-weight ratio is incredible. The overall cost, I think, is reasonable. But when you break it down around 200 hours doing a full rebuild, but I wish electric technology would catch up at some point and be much more practical. Because I feel like at that point, the amount of maintenance, the reliability, and the overall lifespan of the paramotor is gonna be far greater. For me, pulling apart an engine or doing general maintenance isn't a big issue. But I know for a lot of people, hey, that shadow is pretty rad. I know for a lot of people, that's like an intimidating thing, and it may be a reason that they don't get into the sport. I've talked to a number of people recently that are specifically buying electric paramotors, knowing that they're not going to have the flight time as uh, compared to a gas engine, but they're doing it specifically for the lack of maintenance and the reliability factors that electric has to offer. <laughs> oh shit, it's the cops. Good day, officer. <laughs> Dude waved, <laughs> like barely. I did not seem stoked. All right, the final thing, number five that I hate about paramotors, and I think I can say largely this is the biggest thing I hate about paramotors, and that is that they are very weather dependent. As opposed to a fixed wing airplane or even skydiving where you can do it throughout the middle of the day with ease, paramotors are typically limited to sunrise and sunset for like 
the first hour or two or last hour or two of the day. So we're kind of like a plastic bag in the wind, as Katy Perry once said. That means to enjoy the sport, you kind of have to have some flexibility in your lifestyle. The ability to wake up at odd hours and be able to go out at sunset every night. I would say on average here in New Jersey throughout the entire year, I can probably get a solid three flights a week. In the summertime, it's probably higher, like five or six flights a week, whereas the winter time gets a lot less. And then in the spring and fall, you definitely have time spans where you could go like a week or two without a good flyable day because it's raining or windy or whatever the case may be. Unfortunately, I don't think there's anything that's ever gonna change that. I always get emails from people that are like, Tucker, you got to listen to this. I have a genius idea. Why don't we put tent poles in the wings? Why don't we put some type of inflatable baffle, like a kite surfing wing, in the wing so it can't collapse? We'll be able to fly so much faster. You can fly in the middle of the day. Your wing will never collapse. But the reality is that there are very smart people that engineer these wings. And if it was as simple as that, they would have done that a long, long time ago. Check out those deer just hopping through the field. So we took off from my middle school. We may as well fly over my elementary school. Someone broke up on the roof. If we fly over, you will see it says, see you on the other side, on the roof, which is very strange because there's multiple road signs on this road and each uh, sequential one will say C, then you, then on the other side, on the road signs. And it's also on the roof of that school, which is very suspicious. Someone make a conspiracy theory and comment it down below. Why is it like that? Watch as this hot air balloon struggles to find somewhere to land. Let me just fly down and give him a little push. <laughs> the balloon crew is going out to catch him. There he goes! This is riveting. Is he gonna bounce it? Oh, 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 oh! He's pushing the tree out of the way. <laughs> nice and steady, nice and steady. Great success. All right, time to wrap up this flight. The sun is setting. Right up ahead is our LZ behind the school. So there you have it, my top five things I hate about paramotoring. As always, huge thank you to everyone for the support. A lot of you guys really liked that Mojo review I did recently, and I've been getting a lot of emails and inquiries and purchases on Ozone Mojo Wings. So I wanna do more of that. I wanna do one for the Spider 3. As always, if you guys wanna check out TuckerGot.com, we've got Risky Biscuits Co. merch, as well as Ozone Wings, reserves, harnesses, all stuff like that, even e-props, like I'm running on my paramotor right now. Till the next one, fly safe, have fun, peace.